G'day YouTube, how the heck are we doing? It is Foul Play here, back for another Modern League. Um, so I've had a couple of leagues uh, since uh, the 5-0 you guys saw. They didn't go so great, um, so looking to bounce back from here. We have minus out one Deafening Silence for one Tamiya Safekeeping. My idea being two copies of Deafening Silence has redundancy into things like Blue Red Mechtide. Where if we have the Tamiyo safekeeping, we can potentially protect a creature post um, dress down and uh, sort of gives us the benefit of gaining life. If they're interacting with our auras, we can uh, do that too. We can give our creature indestructible from an engineer of explosives, etc. etc. Seemed semi worthwhile to me. Uh, for anyone that's new here, we're uh, utilizing Floofy Paws and we are going to be utilizing its strength of rebuilding with Sentinel's Eyes, Rancor, and Audacity to get rebuild post those uh, post blowout. All right, so here we are for the first match. We won the Dara Hall on the play. It's already started out so much better than my other matches. Really good looking hand. I'm gonna slam it down and pass. Alright, so opponent plays out Gilda's Goose, gets a food token. Better man than me would be able to pick what our opponent is on at this point, but uh, I'm coming up slightly short right now. Sure, we'll find out shortly enough. Verdant Catacombs, cracks. An opponent concedes they don't want to show us any more for some reason. Okay. Alright, so quick search, we find this uh, deck called Barn Toss, uh, Gilded Goose, Glimmer Barn, Sacrifice Creature, gets 1-1 one, one until end of turn, Puppet, Curious Power, Fling, Thud, Lightning Strike, Barf Abundant Harvest, Veil of Summer, Leyline of Sanctity, wow, they haven't got much for our matchup, but I don't think we have much for them. I guess if we're expecting Fling to hit the face, we could look to bring in Leyline of Sanctity. Um, maybe we play around Enchantment Destruction in the form of like Nature's Claim or something and like some safekeepings. Um, I'm like very uncertain on how to sideboard. This might just be a good matchup where we don't have to worry about much. Um, what's Squirrel Sanctuary do? Nothing exciting. Okay. Um, let's go something like this. We'll minus one audacity for this. I'm only going to bring in three ley lines because I'm not super sold on it. I think we're probably a good matchup anyway, so we might not need it. Hand is trash. Mulligan. Hand is better. Keep. Throw a guy. Get into it. All right. Opponent Gilded Goose passing to us. Looks like maybe I played the wrong land. We might need to play around Blood Moon here, and they can turn to Blood Moon on us. Oh wait, no. This is a food token, not a treasure. Although they can eat it with the Gilded Goose, right? Yeah, never mind. They can turn to Blood Moon us here. We'll see. Opponent Green Green. Finale of Devastation. Okay. Oh! Asmora. Okay. Finding Cookbook. I mean, an Asmora matchup is really good for us. Wow. I'll take that. <laughs> mm, our draws haven't been great so far. Starting to flood out. Guess we can just ignore what they're doing and attack. Hey, Wire Might. And that's a frustrating one in lieu of what's in hand. Wait. After, oh, it exiles the Rancor. Never mind. I thought it was a destroy effect. Cool. Makes sense. Tribal Haywire Might, apparently. Um, cool. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, love it. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> this, is, this is all great. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Concede. Um, I don't want to waste our time here. Alright, Leyline of Sanctity back out, and uh, we'll just bring our stuff back in, I guess. Audacity may be slightly better than all that glitters. Cool, we'll do that. Oh, actually, maybe I should probably have Tamiyo safekeeping here. I have one in. Okay. 
Uh, this sounds a lot better than the last one for what our opponent's doing, so we'll keep it. Opponent miles to six. Alright, play our guy. Opponent fetches up forests and pass to us, so this could just be a nature's claim. I think we want to apply some description of pressure here, and I mean, both these auras are pretty bad targets for nature's claim, so let's go ahead and do that. Alright, no effects from the opponent. Weird. Shocks. Hey, why am I? Uh, sure. This is pretty good. He takes out the Rancor, not the Audacity. Triggers. Hey, look, mana. Beautiful. That's what we want. Opponent could have done this attack step as well instead of doing it when he did. Get back another Rancor. Seems fine. Just trying to battle through the interaction here. And opponent concedes. So, some Asmoras in hand. Some Daredevils, which go from Graveyard back to hand, right? Um, some Ren and Six. They just needed some way to get Asmora out onto the field. And, I mean, they couldn't interact with us too well. They could kill the Floofy Paws, but... After Haywire Might was utilized, they sort of ran out of gas, so we'll take that. Okay, welcome back for match number two. We won the die roll up against Subway Eat Fresh. On the play, keeping this hand. A little land heavy, but one of those interacts with our opponent, and that could be alright. Hopefully our top decks are kind to us. So, Creature and Pass. Uh, opponent on the mulligan to six, Flooded Strand passes back to us. We find Audacity. And I mean, uh, I love me some extra damage, right? Let's go ahead and throw this one down. Oh, have we got Spell Pierce here? I'd prefer the Champel Resolves because we have two lots of First Strike. So my guess is this is getting countered, and that's why I'm specifically casting Cartouche and not Ethereal Armor. Okay, just resolves. Uh, well played to my opponent. I had him read on countering that. So, Trio. Mm -mm. Land from the opponent. This Trio I'm here. Um, okay, Cracks Misty Rainforest. It's a Cascade deck we're versing. Seam Vance in tapped. Fury. Evoke Fury. Sure. I'm fine with this. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, what's this? Our opponent just failed. Failed to undie this effect, so that's pretty good for us. Floofy paws, let's go. Alright, Floofy resolves. Ethereal armor on the Bogle. See if our opponent has a response here. Alright, well that effect resolves. And now we have a choice. We can go after like Rancor because we know we get it back no matter what. We can give Totem Armor to protect. Um, or Sentinel's Eyes for Vigilance. I think we're pretty far ahead. Let's just get another Rancor. And go ahead and attack with our Boogle. Opponent could be holding up like a Path to Exile. Leyline Binding. Sure. Uh, we got the Beside You in hand. Targeting Ethereal Armor. Okay, sure. So that sort of sucks, but... I mean, this was a very strange Fury. Ditching Bone Crusher Giant. Another Fury Evoked. I mean, this one takes out Floofy Paws, so it makes a bit more sense. Our opponent doesn't get the value of bringing it back, though, so. Rancor back to our hand, at the very least. Alright, let's get rid of that Leyline of Binding with Beside You. Reattach to our creature. I can get a land, potentially counter, uh, counter our Rancor. Just chooses to get a Triome instead. And well, we've got exactly lethal, so let's go ahead and attack for it. 
Never mind. Hold the phone. Force of negation, pitching shardless agent. So we are versing Cascade here. My assumption would be Rhinos. I'm not, I don't think it's living in with Prismari Command. So we take the victory game one. Cool. Alright, so here we can see a Rhinos deck. As you can see, main deck Fury, Shardless Agent, Force, Fire Ice, Leyline Binding. It's all adding up, right? So, post board, they have interaction with Force of Vigor. Maybe Leyline of the Void, but I think that's a bit of an overboard. And just their main deck interaction after that. So this is the matchup for Deafening Silence. This is why we have it here. Um, finally, we're versing Rhinos. So we're going to be bringing in Deafening Silence. We're going to be bringing in Tamiyo Safekeeping to help protect us from those Ley Lines of Binding. I think maybe something like this is fine. We'll just take that out, submit, get into it. Okay. So, we see this opening hand with a redundant Hexproof creature, but other than that, it's pretty good. Keep it, get into it. Play a Kawaii Scout, we don't want you. Um, we'll play out a Scout because I don't want to get Mystical Disputed here. I, we really don't need the Tempo Interrupt. Just throw it down and pass. Opponent cracks the Wooded Foothills. Steam Vents, Shocky Shocky. Passing back to us, ice on our land. Sure, whatever. Fine, Spirit Mantle. Well, at least that's an aura. It'd be really good to hit one more land for the game. As it is, attack for two. Temple Garden shocked in. Hmm. Could this be a violent outburst into a bunch of rhinos? I'm going to go for a Spirit Mantle here. It's not resolving Daybreak, but it is something. We have hit our land drop, which is nice. So now we'll Sentinel's Eyes, look to attack. If I can force this, that's fine. I have to pitch a card and it's not the best aura to use that on. Force of Negation. Oh wait, no. This is an island. I thought this was something else. My mistake. So they hard cast Force. We get the attack for 13. Looks like they've missed a land drop. Passing back to us. Sure. This seems like a reasonable time to cast Daybreak Coronet. Opponent, Force of Vigor. All right, this is a real battle here. Let's keep that spirit mantle around, hopefully. Hopefully no counter magic on my opponent's end. God damn it. Damn, 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 that's a huge blowout. All right, fair play to the opponent. What did they pitch crushing footfalls? Lame, now we're like tribal hexproof. <laughs> it's a bit weak. Mm, that feels bad. Mm, not great. <laughs> Opponent makes their land drop. Two in hand. Let's crack a canopy. Alright, well, uh, yeah, tribal hexproof. Let's get in for one. Uh, we might get violent outbursted here. We'll see. No. Alright, let's, uh, let's tribal up. <laughs> Opponent passes back to us. All right, let's crack this one. They did not make a land drop last turn. We'll go ahead. We will attack for a bunch. Deck is not helping us right now. Cool. There it is. Jokes on you, opponent. We get one damage through. <laughs> All right, so this is a bit of a sad state. Opponent's down to seven, though. I'm feeling like this is going to be... us trying to go to game three, though. Opponent wasting no time. Shardless agent this time. Some, some fury, some forces, some ley lines. Finally crashing footfalls. 
Tax rate. And opponent successfully navigated the game. Yeah, we can't win from here. So, given Leyline of Binding, we probably want, like, two copies of Force, I think, is about as high up as we want to go. I mean, they still kept in a lot of Fury, so... Fluffy Paws loses a bit of value, too. I mean, even Daybreak Coronet seemed pretty weak there. What am I doing? We want Gadok Teague. Into Fury, it's not the best, though, but it's probably better than Fluffy Paws. Alright, let's just take out all our Daybreaks. I'm sure I'm going to get crucified in the comment section. Hand is good. Keep. Let's see if it's good after interaction and, like, no card draw. Gemstone Caverns. Cool. So, opponent keeps a six. Starts with Gemstone Caverns on the battlefield. I think we want a thin. Dried Arbor has a secret mode of being pitched to Force of Vigor. It has green color even when in hand. And that happens even through a Blood Moon. So, gonna want to hold on to Dried Arbor in hand for as long as possible to help play around Leyline of Binding. And, uh, alright, whatever opponent, I don't care. So a really good one to resolve against our opponent is just not aggressive. I think we want to try and resolve that one next turn. Let's Audacity attack and then pass. Okay, Trium in tapped, passing to us. And we find Ethereal Armor, so let's play Ethereal Armor. Let's play Ethereal Armor. <laughs> Second one, Leyline of Binding, interacting with either the first one or the Audacity. It is with the first one. Sure. So I think our opponent was playing around Tamiyo's safekeeping there. We'll attack for five. I think we still hold Dried Arbor in hand. I think that's correct. If we didn't see Leyline of Binding, there might have been more of an argument to play it. Playing it exposes it to Fury. Um... Without really adding too much, okay. Opponent Cascades revealing all these cards. All these juicy cards. Let's see, Force of Vigor of our opponents. Um, <laughs> Ottawara, Fire Ice, Shadless Agent, Fury, Leyline. About what's expected. We hit mana, okay. Deafening Silence, let's attack. Opponent gets a block with a Rhino, down to two cards in hand though. If they don't have the second Rhino, could be good. Alright, so they do block correctly. So I'm blocking order. Give our creature indestructible with Tamios. Oh shit. Never mind, I've misplayed with the Deafening Silence. I lose my creature. Okay, that was really, really bad. Uh, apologies. It's been a long day. I'm very, very tired. I've even made my land drop, so I can't play Dried Arbor. We find the second safekeeping. All right. That was a huge punt. Apologies, guys. Crushing footfalls on suspend. Attacks with the one Rhino. Exalted trigger for five damage. We find Rancor. Guess there's no time like the present. Opponent can kill it, they can kill it end step, kill it with it on the stack. Alright, there's dead. Goodbye. Sure. So spend trigger. Attack trigger. Exalted trigger. <laughs> Shocks in the stomping ground. Well, that's a show of strength. That's just gotta be flexing at this point. What do we have? Fury, hardcast? Yeah, okay, we're dead. Suppose we could safekeeping, give it hexproof chump block. Okay, uh, this is if we draw a creature. 
and we do not, so we lose the game. All right, GG to our opponent, I guess. Okay, here we are for match number three. We lost the die roll. We are on the draw. Good looking seven, gonna keep. Find land, it's a pretty good land to find. Throw out our bogle, pass the turn. Opponent getting the savvy triome, survive triome. Onto their turn, scolding time. And they pass to us. Okay, so. Tempo is pretty important in matchups like this. We lead off on Ethereal Armor. We want to resolve Rancor a little bit more than Ethereal. Looks like opponent uh, is just getting a tapped land, I guess. I don't know. I don't think they interact with this. Sacred Foundry. Alright, so this is probably indomitable creativity. I think we have one more turn before we have to play a second creature out. Let's attack for five. Alright, so opponent passes to us. Okay, that's kind of nice. So first things first, audacity. I think it's just an attack, play the scout out, be a little bit defensive. We kill our opponent in two turns regardless of really too much that goes on, so let's play to that. And opponent concedes onto sideboarding. Alright, at a real quick look. Uh, this, this deck's super out of date, this is probably not it. Um, okay, let me look for something better. Alright, so it looks like we could potentially be facing Omnath, Domain Zoo, Creativity, Combo, Reanonator, Mardu, um, okay, cool. I think whoever they are, they probably have Leyline of Binding. Uh, I'm gonna guess this is like, uh, maybe Deafening Silence is an overboard. I, we want to bring in this, we'll efficiency swap the Teagues for the Floofy Paws, and then I think we just minus on a few clunky auras, submit, get into it. Okay, we see this hand, and this is not the play. This hand, very vulnerable to interaction. I think it's possible to keep, though. This could be tilting. I need to draw well, most likely, with this hand. Uh, maybe I should just be throwing it. I think, most definitely, I should be throwing it. Dwarven and Mine in tap, so it is a creativity deck. Gotcha. <clears throat> All right, so Bogle Pass. Step one, we found an aura. Bitted Reunion, sure thing. Fabled Mirror Breaker to the bin. Well, hopefully one of their slower hands, I guess. I don't know. Play this. Sentinel's Eyes is a good discard target. So I'll play up my other auras and attack. Looks like our opponent missed their land drop. Uh, okay, so we've all been there. That sort of sucks, but I guess we'll keep piling on the pressure and make things hard for them. Attacks. In for nine, put them to seven. We either get comboed or we're good. They need one more land to get, like, the Dwarven Mind anyway, anyway, like, I think we just win. Cool. I'll take it. <laughs> Tucks, attack, get in there. Do the thing. Cool. All right, that was a strangely quick and easy match. On to match four. So, match number one. We lost the uh, Dairol here up against Karzov. And it looks like this player is on a uh, Serum Powder's Tron list. God, into Walking Ballista Chalice, a Floofy Paws hand is very risky. Okay, cool. Keep this. Ditch, ditch. Keep the rest. Alright. Well, uh, Chalice on one gets us good, but fingers crossed. 
Not much we can do there. Okay, here we go. Opponent, two mana. Chalice on one. And that decision making took like two minutes apparently. Very interesting. Alright, let's attack for one. You can see uh, as well, main deck Ensnaring Bridge. Natty Tron. Yeah, don't mind if you do. Spell Sky. Okay, opponent. Settle it down just a little bit. Khan. This is going to be a head to sideboard game, I believe. Khan active. Revealing Ensnaring Bridge. So I guess they've got seven copies of Ensnaring Bridge in their deck. Um, it's not even matched. Uh, gross. I think we fetch the Dryad Arbor here. I think we untap and we concede. Cool. So a real quick look here. We can see Prison Tron. All that uh, good stuff. I mean, we basically already saw anyway. Um... With their sideboard, I guess it doesn't really matter because their prison's already constructed in the main deck. They're completely colorless. They don't have any interaction. I think that they're going to be boarding in here. It's all going to just be wishlisted off the Khan the Great Creator. One of main deck Blast Zone, which they can search up with Expedition Map. I don't know if Deafening Silence is good or not. I think it might be overboarding. Definitely want our Force, definitely want our Gadok Teague. <clears throat> Fluffy Pause gives us the chance to race our opponent, but it also allows for two, turn 2 Chalice of the Void. Um, probably like 1 to 2 Fluffy is correct. Here in this spot, we probably want to minus on 1 drops. Uh, just butt ton of Audacity, a Cartouche, and we'll submit that. That should be about correct. <clears throat> hey, you know what's good against Tron? Gadok to keep, snap keep. <laughs> so opponent naturally keeps their hand. They're not getting rid of it at all. Let's thin the deck. Three lands is the exact correct number. We don't want to see any more. Bogle, pass the turn. So problem with turn two Gadok Tig is it runs into Dismember on tap. Um, I don't really think we want to be doing that, so I think we just continue our game plan. Drop a couple of auras, look to draw our two mana auras, and look to win after that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's not a great, hugely great creature at 3-3, but hopefully Gadok Teague is very, very good. Maybe we draw another Hyena Umbra to protect the Teague as well. All right, in for three. Opponent didn't have to think about it for as long this time, so uh, just Chalice of the Void on one. Play out, our Teague, attack. So it looks like they're leveraging off of Chalice because these Urza's Towers, they're the same Urza land. There's mine, okay. This thing could die. Spell Sky, sure. Show me Daybreak. Dismember on the Gadok Teague. Sorcery speed for some bizarre reason. Raise Verge Thicket, lovely. Daybreak. Why did I play that instead of Horizon Canopy? Excellent question. Well, as a two of Dismember, of course they had it in their Natty 7. But uh, here we are. Opponent chooses not to block. What? Alright, we... Sort of pretended like we had a flash speed aura there. Oh yeah, there we go. Natural Tron now. Never mind. All is dust. What do we got? What goodies have you got for us? Walking Ballista on 4. I mean, that's fine. It's actually okay. Manageable. All right, never fear. Our Horizon Canopy wouldn't have drawn us into anything of relevance. So let's just pass the turn. 
opponent, Mystic Forge. So the fun really begins now. Um, as a saga <laughs> really, really begins now. All right, like Spirit Mantle would do it. Spirit Mantle would get us there. Another Mystic Forge, sure. Spell Sky, sure. Whatever. Bugger off, we don't care about that. Lovely. Deck is really treating us right now. So we have six two mana auras, four force of vigor, and one Besidju that we are drawing to. And uh, out of those, what, 11 cards, we're just drawing dead. So, great feeling. <laughs> Opponent, uh, a lot of value here. A lot of value. I don't think we win from this point up to... Double Spell Sky is really strong. Vent is fair as well. Yikes. Oh, wow. Opponent names beside you with Sorcerer's Spyglass. So, that's not great for us. I have a feeling like he's probably going to block this time. Ah, there we go. Found the line. Gotcha. Alright, well, I guess one more draw. One more chance. End step. Opponent is pumping up this bad boy. Nope, invent is fair. Drawing. Search your library for an artifact card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. God, what does Stone of the Brain do? Exile Stone of the Brain. Choose a card name. Target opponents. Search target opponents. Graveyard, hand, library. For up to, excuse me. Four cards with that name. Exile them. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to take away our Force of Vigor now. Um, this seems a bit fucking busted. <laughs> Token. <clears throat> If they do this, um, we can still potentially win. That construct's a problem. If we get specifically Spirit Mantle... Oh wait, we can't even resolve the Spirit Mantle through these freaking spell skirts. What am I thinking? God, this is revolting. <laughs> All right, GG's, you might as well uh, skip to the next match and skip back if it's anything different than a uh, loss. It plays it, still plenty of mana to activate it. Plenty of, plenty of mana. Lots of mana here. Tux. We are forced to block one of their creatures. Let's block this one. <clears throat> Second main crack map. I guess they're looking for blast zone. I think they've already played a land for turn though. I think I saw a tower earlier on. Full mana activates this. Sure. What do they name? It hasn't even announced what they're naming. I guess they have to type it in. Opponent names Force of Vigor. Concede. Alright, that was fun. <laughs> On to the final match. Match number five. We have lost the die roll. We are versing a Gigantha deck and kicking things off with a mulligan. I think I probably want to do this and keep the most resilient hand to board wipes possible. With good, aggressive stuff. Um... What are we facing? Is this a shadow deck with Fetch Shock Thoughtsies? <laughs> Ragavan! Okay, that's not as bad. Hey, look! Auras! Nice. Awesome. We'll take that. So an important thing to note, our opponent cannot be running the Evoke Elementals if they have Gigantha here. Attacking with the Monkey Trigger. Finds Audacity. 
we've discovered before that our opponent does actually get the card draw off this audacity plus it's a really good clock so it's pretty good for them to play it out here if they want to mirror breaker all right so this looks like a creativity deck I'm guessing, let's shut down that uh, Raghavan now with our Vigilance. This bloody token getting treasures off attack trigger, not damage. Super lame. Alright, so I'm guessing we're versing some sort of Pestilence deck then. Mirror Breaker, Ditching, Spell Bomb, and Misha's Risha Search Disc. Exile up to, exile the top two cards of your library, choose one of them, you may... Until end of turn, you may play that card with Unearth for two. Okay. So, we untap, we draw Temple Garden. S started off by playing Floofy Paws. Now, the big question here is, if our opponent gives us our trigger, do we get Cartouche Solidarity for an extra creature, or do we get Hyena Umber and try to protect this one? Um... We could assume that a good player would kill it in response. This player does indeed decide to kill it in response. So an attack for seven. Seems reasonable. Cool. Not too bad. Correct, seven catacombs. So I think if you're versing a good player, you assume they're going to kill it in response if they have the removal. You could double down and get the Hyena Umbra and look for extra value next turn. Currently, I don't have any other auras in hand though, so that could be a little bit naive, perhaps. Um, or you could get the Cartouche and then that forces them to have two singular removal spells. We know they don't have Fury, so they can't value us out that way. Alright, so Saga Trigger... Opponent creates a construct, sure. <laughs> um, Kiki flipped. <clears throat> Mox Amber. Wait, this isn't... Surely this isn't Grinding Station. Players Saga. Shadow Sphere. Okay. <laughs> After seeing this... I'm thinking it's a Persist deck. And hello, Cowboy. Go ahead and play that one out. Going to attack for 11. An opponent has to block with a lot of their board here. Block, block. We have Trample, 5 toughness not enough, he has to put away at least one more creature. Sure. So if any of these were artifact creatures, we could shrink the construct token before damage and deal extra points of damage over the top. That is not the case however. So just going to deal what we can to our opponent. I'm going to shock in this Temple Garden. We can sack it on the Horizon Canopy if need be. Opponent on one life, having to recover. Opponent concedes to, I guess, their draw step. So at a quick glance here, we can see Creativity. We can see Madu mid-range. I guess we'll check this one because it has green for Gigantha, potentially. Um, I guess it's not quite this. I think... Maybe this is the one. Yeah, so Fabled Mirror Breaker. This is more what our opponent's about. So with Creativity plus Persist as ways to get their Archon. And uh, they use this as a draw engine or a loot engine, I should say. Discard effects. This rubbish. Beside you as well. Okay. So we did see four thought sees and uh, some other stuff there. So I'm going to bring this in. There's potential for Blood Moon that seems maybe less likely because they do have to keep their Dwarven Mine online, right? 
think something like this. Maybe cut all our floofies. Maybe leave one floofy. Cut this. Cut this. Alright, let's go with that. We'll submit. Hopefully it's good. We don't have enchantment inter uh, artifact interaction for them with uh, Force of Vigor, but I think that's overboarding at that point. Opponent reveals Gigantha again. We have Leyline, so they shouldn't have a way to destroy our uh, Leyline with if they are purely just Rakdos. If they have Splash, they might. Opponent stomping ground into Spellbomb. We find Razor Verge Thicket. All right, well, we've seen all the mana we want to see for the game, right? Uh, we have also seen green mana, so opponent can have enchantment destruction now. Renin Six, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Getting their land back. I guess they don't miss another land drop this game. We find Gadok Teague. Um, it's less than inspiring, less than exciting. If we play Gadok Teague, we expose it to the spell bomb, so I guess we're not going to do that. Uh, we could be, if we play Scout, playing into Hesedju. Um, Hijetsugu, I think is the pronunciation, or closer. Attack our opponent, ignore Ren. It's really unfortunate that we don't have good tempo. We don't have a big attack with a Rancor effect here. We did board three Audacities out. Alright, we see Urza's Saga again. Five in hand. Opponent plays the Urza Saga instead of getting a Ren Trigger. Monkey enters the battlefield. Haywire Might! Oh my god, this card is everywhere. Can it just go away? Are you fucking kidding me, deck? Alright, let's go ahead. Let's attack with the Slippery Bogle. Um, yeah, these draws are not the kindest. This Ley Lines feels trash. <laughs> I wonder if our opponent is actually holding any discard or not. Um, I would be surprised. Spellbomb draws a card. I don't know what they targeted with the Spellbomb. Themselves, maybe? I missed that. All right, second main, opponent plays a land, cracks the land, presumably activating a Renin Six. Soul of Windrace, whenever this enters the battlefield or attacks, you may put a land card from a graveyard onto the battlefield tapped under your control. Discard a land, gain three life, discard a land, draw a card, discard a land, gains indestructible until end of turn, tap it. Sure, so Windswept Teeth for our opponent. Ren and Six, get back Wooded Foothills. Alright, this is some jank here. Daybreak Coronet. I guess we have to, like... We need to get blown out, but then hopefully we draw a one mana aura and can rebuild and look good. Attack our opponent directly. I think... Potential Raghavan blocks here. Okay. So we have Saga Trigger. Opponent can search up Shadow Spear and they can uh, start bolting our creature into the Abyss. Unholy Heat. They need a few more cards in the graveyard before they can do that. They're not far off. Alright, opponent floating the mana. Do they want the Construct? I think they probably do. They're pretty far ahead right now. Five in hand, but the value would be good. Another Haywire Might. I don't get it. This card, I know it replaces itself, but it just does not seem as good. Maybe it's more free with Urza's Saga. It just doesn't seem that good to me, though. Urza's Saga, running six. All that good stuff. Aura. One mana aura. One more mana aura. Thank you, Degf. Finally, that resolves. Daybreak. I, I know they've got two of these guys that they can pop, but 
We need to start attacking. This is too much going on here. Attack our opponent, representing lethal. No form of trample right now. <laughs> opponent just blocks with a mirror token and uh, looks like they're going to interact with our enchantment second main maybe? I don't know. This is a bit odd. Overgrown tomb as well. Alright. Untaps. He's still not firing off these mines. Is he literally saving it for trample? What's going on here? Alright, Fabled Mirror Breaker, cast now. Our opponent has also played an Urza Saga, which they use for mana. Passing back to us, and uh, yeah, look at, look at all these amazing enchantments. I mean, I guess we've outdone the Haywire Mites right now. Opponent hasn't been getting us with Indomitable Creativity. But we get uh, just free chump blocks for quite a while, the opponent gets... Opponent finally gets a construct token here. Triggers on the mirrors. So mirror ticked up, mirror flipping. Gets this guy with the summoning sickness. There's a saga, taps for mana. I assume they're just cashing this one in now. Makes a construct, sure. They probably should have used this saga's mana to make that construct, but that's okay. Den of the Bugbear. It looks like they got Mox Amber off of the Urza Saga. I think I've seen that right, although it wasn't announced in the game chat. There's a lot going on this side of the board and I'm getting quite fatigued at the moment. Urza Saga, returned by Renin6. So another one of them is about to come down. <laughs> Never mind, they played Den of the Bugbear this time. I guess this isn't a creativity deck. I guess it's just like a Jund value deck um, of some description. I'd really like to diversify on multiple creatures, but with because these Haywire Mites, we can't really do that. I guess we attack face again. We've probably run out Galak Teague now. There's no real reason to hold it in hand. Ragavan on the chump block. Sure thing. See if our opponent's got a burn effect. Response makes a construct token. Fatty fatty constructs. And this has a saga is obviously going to tick up and chance for another construct, chance for another free spell. Another Kiki. The construct token. So now we enter the spot where our opponent can start copying their haywire mites and then picking off an aura for free every turn, if not two auras for free every turn. This time they get Shadow Spear. Returns as a saga with the Renin Six. Replays as a saga. Oh, we have important information. Our opponent did actually discard a Thoughtseize to one of these Kiki reflections earlier on. We find beside you. Alright, well, I guess we attack. <laughs> I, I don't know if we ever get through what they're doing currently with all these Kiki reflections and things. I feel like our opponent should have killed us earlier on though. We can still get more information about their deck. Hey, why am I blocking? Activating Hey, why am I? Fogging the damage, life gained here. God, running six plus Urza Saga just means they never run out of gas, doesn't it? Um, so they took out the Hyena Umbra, sure. Let's try and get rid of this. Maybe they only have two of it in their deck. Oh, I've floated one extra mana pointlessly. Never mind. Uh, looks like they didn't hard yield through or anything. So they're probably going to pop a enchantment in response. Sure, you're going to copy one of these. 
I, I did this wrong. I shouldn't have gone to end step. I should have done this in my second main. They get one extra haywire might now. Okay, my mistake. Apologies, guys. Goodbye, Ethereal Armor. Next one, Pops. Goodbye, Ethereal Armor. So if they Shadow Spear, make us lose Hexproof. They're getting pretty close to a double burn spell, like killing our creature. Or at least double burn spell, removing the Hyena Umbra. Alright, so another Urza Saga. More Construct fun. Spell Bomb. Wooded Foothills. Sure. That's not an Urza Saga. What are you doing, opponent? <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> Just not even interested in the emblem. I'm not even sure they play any instants and sorcery sorceries past thought seas. Um Alright, that's the thing. I don't think we have a great attack here, so I guess we don't even attack. End step, more constructs, yeah. Alright, here's the moment of truth. Do they get another Haywire Might? We know you've got a million construct tokens and they're all enormously strong, enormously large. Okay, they get Misha's Research Desk. Exile up to two cards from your library, choose one of them. To land of town, you may play that card. Alright, so I guess they're out of Haywire Mites. That is good news. Finds Fabled Mirror Breaker. Opponent passes to us. We draw dead again. I guess we play the second main. More constructs. Casual, like, 70 power on the board here. <laughs> oh, what do you know? Another construct. Surely these Urza Sagas are running out of targets soon. <laughs> Fails to find. Okay. There we go. We just need to draw an evasive or a spirit mantle, griff spoon, and we can get the win. Uh, where are they getting life from? What? Was it just these haywire might triggers? That seems like more life than what I was expecting. Okay. We find audacity. That is a great start. Floofy. Trample. Trigger. Assuming it resolves. Uh, five cards in our opponent's hand. They can definitely Lightning Bolt in response. Uh, spell Bomb. Sorry, I missed that one. Alright, so no Floofy Trigger. I guess I shouldn't have played Floofy then. Can't really attack right now. Past turn. Shadow Spear activated. Unholy Heat. Unholy Heat, Trigger Totem Armor. Alright, so you got rid of one lot of Totem Armor. Terrifying. More Urza Saga's tokens. Uh, so there is a real world where this dies now. Activate Shadow Spears. Turns Bloodstain Mire. I'm really not seeing much discard here. Um, Renin 6 active will kill our Bogle. Unholy Heat will do it too, but costing them a card. Um, hey, look, relevant cards, cool. <laughs> oh no, opponent's attacking. Don't do that, opponent. 70 damage doesn't kill us, but uh, I have a feeling like we want to block some of this. Oh, I just skipped through my blocking. Okay, never mind. Um, opponent could have activated Urza Saga and killed us in response, but we are dead. You'll be happy to know Gadok Tig is a complete waste of time. Let's go with two Floofies. I'm going to be taking out the Ley Line as well. These are the cards we're looking at bringing in. Force of Vigor, maybe four is a, set, uh, a bit over the top. Two to three might be more correct. 
Time your safekeeping seems semi reasonable. All right, let's maybe trim something like this. One day rate can come out. Okay, good and good seven, please. Age old thing of have to hit land or we're doomed. Temple Garden, shocky shocky. All right, if we hit. Our land, on curve here, this hand is so stacked. We get such an aggressive attack. We can get out Vigilance as well. A lot of these enchantments reoccur from the graveyard, so that's really strong too. Um, they probably take Ethereal Armor. Of course, take out Leyline. Here's the Thought Seize. Still, our hand looks very good no matter what they remove with Thought Seize. It's, it's probably Ethereal Armor to buy them time. Alright, opponent chooses what I would have as well. And, of course, we fucking brick on our mana. Why would we fucking curve out? How frustrating. How incredibly freaking frustrating. It's like so critical. So critical to have that tempo here. And we really don't want to be mulliganing down on perfectly capable hands looking for just that second land drop. Ioc. Alright, so we saw... Out of like 30 cards from our opponent's deck last game, we saw one Thought Seize in the graveyard. And in game three here, we've already seen three discard effects. Unbelievable. Play. Play. Surely they don't have Creature Hate too. Sentinel's Eyes doesn't matter because it comes back from the graveyard. So let's protect our hand as best as we can from the fourth discard effect. All right, opponent plays Wooded Foothills, cracks it, passes to us. We find an aura, which is nice. Um, so we'll go for Sentinel's Eyes. Lightning Bolt in response. I mean, I'd like to say I'm surprised, but it just makes a lot of sense, right? Rancor. Rancor attack. Opponent on six life, and we can deal exactly lethal. Opponent concedes, we get the 3-2. My god, was that frustrating. That was so close. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's the match over and done with. We managed to get the 3-2, uh, manning the league 3-2. and two. Um, Our win rate did take a loss this league, unfortunately, going to 62% win rate. Um, still, the deck seems, for the most part, strong. Most of our losses were to our own tempo, tempo and not hitting that second land drop, not being able to spew out cards. So, I guess that's sort of frustrating. I don't mind Tamiyo safekeeping. It seems reasonable at the moment. Um, I think I'm mostly happy with the 3-2 split between that and Deafening Silence. Um, yeah. So, I, I don't think I have anything um, too much more constructive to say, say today. I'm pretty mentally fatigued. Um, so I'm going to wind that one up there. Thank you all so much for watching, especially up until the end. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is the metagame adjusting to us? Are we seeing variants? What's going on here? Um, love to hear from you. Anyway, until next time, have a great day. I'll see you then.